Mike Stalker. We, we kept doing the music, and that's our label that started. Boss Club. Okay. Yeah, so that's what we had now. We got a label called Boss Club. We built on the city. Man, we started it. A lot of my homies. We ambitious and we make music and we linked up and we got a movement going. I got you. Hey, before Boss Club, I, no I guess I wasn't pushing myself as hard as an artist. Since we've been doing this Boss Club um, thing, I mean, I've been, I've been concentrating on music a whole lot more. I started making music when I was way young, back in like middle school and stuff like that. But when I got older and we found a Boss Club, this turned into a more um, a multifaceted type of artist, you know, dealing with different type of genres of music, thinking about more content that actually people want to hear instead of this shit that I get somebody from in the club. So I pretty much just kind of evolved into a more mature person as well. So that kind of made my artistry go into a different lane from what I was was before Boss Club when I started, so. Before Boss Club, I was like lost. You know what I'm saying? My music was everywhere. I had to find out who I was. And then, you know what I'm saying? I joined Boss Club, met with Kai, bam, everybody. And we just, we just came together and said we were going to start this and we were going to finish it. Our goal is really to be one of the biggest companies out here who you can reach out to and really help y'all be the biggest club out here right now. Right now, I feel like a lot of everything that's going on with us, like music, sports, everything is turning into a business. The love is all. Try to bring that back. Through all the lessons we learned throughout the years, we said we might as well go ahead and start our own thing. That's when uh, Kyle Bam, that was in a group called Infamous, they came with, they came together with myself, um, our twins, Easy and Trigger, uh, Silly, and we all came together like a family. We said, shit, we fuck with each other anyway, what we might as well do is be our own label. And that's where you get Boss Club at. What is Boss Club? Um, boss Club. Boss Club. A uh, Boss Club. As we struggle together, we gonna start off like this. Boss Club is a family. Boss Club is a group. It's really a brotherhood. Boss Club is business. Um, group of young men and young women who are great at what they do. A uh, Boss Club is a group of self-empowered entrepreneurs. Boss Club is a lifestyle. The best way, I think, that's the best way how to put it. Yeah, Boss Club is a lifestyle. We're going to run with that. That means built on self-success. Built upon self-success. Built on self-success. And we're going to keep telling y'all. Everyone in the world has a point of view. No, 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 no. What's your look? What's your look? What the fuck you talking about? What the fuck you talking about? What the fuck you talking about? What the fuck So what, what are we shooting for today? It's my song called No Way. Tell me a little bit about that. It's really about um, the summary of all the, the bullshit I dealt with in 2016. Not everything, but just some of the key moments, like my car getting fucked up. These paper bags, they just symbolize people in my life. Some of them, they'll smile at you and they're fake as fuck. Some, some people just around money purposes. Some people just around, you know, do drugs with you, they be fake. Some people, they ain't talking about sharing good shit and they make this face. Pretty <laughs> much about, you know, you never know who around you, who don't really trust at the end of the day. Folks have revealed themselves all the time, so that's kind of what this song about.
some time to work on myself, lost all my hoes. Highway to success, been a lonely road. Personally, my biggest challenge is that I do a little bit of everything. Aside from helping myself, I help everybody that I care about. And not that that's a challenge, but that's just another part. That's another trait of me that I have. So I got a lot going on. Like sometimes I'm shooting videos. Sometimes I'm helping people with their songs. I'm doing photos for people. And then all in that, you know, I'm making my own music, trying to get us more plugs for Boss Club, as well as networking all the time. So it's not just about me at this point. It's about everybody. So sometimes my biggest challenge is um, setting my priorities and, you know, staying true to my priorities. Because at the end of the day, I like being an artist, number one. But I know for who I am, I have to do other things because I am CEO. So I got to do all type of things. So that's my biggest challenge, just... You know, balancing out everything that I got to do. I can't even regret anything because it made me who I am today. Maybe, Since yeah, like shit. Maybe, yeah, uh. Pipe behind my back, face to face, it ain't no sound. Antisocial, I'd rather be in the booth than come around. All the shit we've been doing got my name buzzing around the town. Shit lit so long, that's why a youngin' got a stunt now. Everybody said they was gon' help, gave me to run around. Now they callin' my phone, asking why I don't come around. And I'm not doing no song unless you increase my account. Radio ain't playing me, so I went to the underground. Think I really want my music to speak to the people who just grinding out here trying to make a way because you know I'm not about to sit here and lie about nothing. I work work a nine to five job every day. Like I speak to the people who trying to break out of that and grind. Cause I don't really agree with that working till you die type. I, I salute everybody who does do that, but me, I don't feel like that's my path to work until I die. So I speak to the people who just grind it as as a whole. Well, it's not even just for the folks punching the clock, for the folks just trying to make a better way. This AK is definitely a, a, is a, is a great CEO. He's on. They did not believe when I said we if anything, I couldn't imagine and obviously it's starting to buy magic. He's getting like damn good at least. There's a lot of people here for one cause and the morale is great. The participation is great. All the pieces of the puzzle just coming together and we just really building an empire for a lack of better term. You're seeing boss club, you're not seeing nothing else that you've been seeing before. I mean, look, that's, that, I ain't gonna tell you no lie, you know, most artists now, you know, they, they coming up independent and they got a strong movement, you feel what I'm saying? They campaign is so strong that, you know, the major label, they coming to them, you feel what I'm saying? So, I, I ain't gonna need, I don't object to that. You know what I'm saying? So, so you as a solo artist right now, um, would you look to, would you sign a deal as a solo artist or would it have to be, you're signing my company? It's us. It used to be the dream to want to get signed, but now I just feel like if the dream just blow up, the label, they gonna take a lot of your money. Don't get me wrong, getting signed ain't bad, but you can make more money being independent. Yeah. So, I guess for this video, he got to do with the mask on, he trying to force them to sign that shit. And that's how it is. I was recording a lot of music for the mixtape, No Love and Heartbreak, and it was a lot of slow songs. And then I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta come with some real shit again so people know I can still rap and spit. So that's like, basically what I'm saying. Like, it start off slow. You gonna hear the song, like, it start off slow. Now it starts going in about everything that's going on right now. So that's why my first line, I'm like, this ain't no slow song. I slept on because I just got tired of doing slow shit. No slow song, I was slept on Black Friday, I was stepped on, don't cry, babe. I kept on work Friday, not the check on my mom. I was thinking about like the industry about basically like how how when I come in the game, I'm not gonna change who I am. So um, just like I just did this song like a few probably like two weeks ago. It's just something that came up in the spur of the moment. A lot of shit was going on in the industry that I need. You running out of time or you running out of rhyme You really wanna shine cause your father wasn't run You spit a few lines, you don't really feel your sound And I know you really trying to What's up y'all, my name is Jay Benz From Miami, Florida and I reside on the east side of Atlanta And I'm a hip hop artist And boss club label For my music, I wanted to um, touch their soul You know, I want them to actually feel that Real music still exists And um, I got that, God bless me with it And I'm a uh, you know, show it until I get taken out. A lot of my stuff come from the heart. It just happened because I've been doing music for like 19 years now. So 
You know what I'm saying? I'm finally getting some buzz. But all the music is ready. So, I don't know. Great band for him. He's like, he already said he's even more. He got the song for the ladies. He got the, the good quality songs where a, a, a big lady want to pick it up. The person that's going to pop in the mainstream very soon, J Bass. Really got that radio sound to his music, but he also got that Wale feel with the emotion to it. I'm high as your favorite rapper in his pinnacle. I'm speaking in general. I give you the mess where they give you the made it out of poverty. I mean, it just, it just depends on how far you want to go with your artistry. Like, do you just want to be known in your neighborhood or known? in your hood or like known in the states but if you feel like your music is gonna touch the world and i want mine to touch the world so you know if i if i have to get signed i have to get signed but you know what i'm saying i really love what i what i do and i love to touch people so we created this positive movement you know Helping each other, helping the poor, you know, helping the lost. That's what we do. We like motivators. The first thing we did together, I would say, was the Feed the Streets event. That's the first one that was like monumental to me that I really liked. Uh, we went out and fed the homeless, basically. <laughs> was in this bitch like three in the morning making ham sandwiches and shit, man. Filling up brown paper bags with ham sandwiches and goddamn chips and water just to go out there and give back to the community and so forth. Um, we out here right now on this Sunday, Heat the Streets. Previous to this, we did Feed the Streets. We did it twice so far, but now we're giving out clothes and warming up everybody out here. It's been a real cold winter, so we're just passing out clothes and warming these folks up. Heat the Streets was started by Barstow, I want to say it was either Ty or Morgan who came up with the idea. And we just went, went on with it because we, we had such good success with Feed the Streets. So why not Heat the Streets? Yeah, it's really to get back, you know what I'm saying? And we want to just help everybody just not be out here freezing. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody can go to the store and buy, buy a jacket or gloves or a hat and tell whatever they want. So we just give back. Um, why give back? Why give back? It's the right thing to do. Right. Giving right. back is the right thing to do. Always that. Right. Always that. Right. Right. Even when you're not rich or you don't got it like that, it's still good to give back. A lot of people really don't care. So when you guys come out here and do this right here, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And we, we commend you for it, you know, you, you know, come back again and visit us again. Everybody, everybody doesn't have money. Everybody's not doing well out here. So, you know, we're not rich or nothing like that, but we do what we can for our own city that we live in. We're a part of this city, so everyone should have an opportunity, you know, to feel safe, feel comfortable. So that's how we started Feed the Streets about four, five months ago. Here's the deal what's going on, really. Basically, 90% of the people here have felonies here. So when you get a felony, you can't get a job. These people are able to do more because they look better. Appearance matters. The benefits for us is that it makes us look more versatile. It makes us look as if we're not just doing music, but we're also giving to our community and giving to our community and helping out those people that surround us. In America, they like to show young black men in a negative light. And it just goes to show that we all don't act like that at all. At all. And you know, this is just a positive way for you to look up, look up to us, basically, and show, us, show them how to do it. How to give back to the community, how to never forget where you came from. Uh, we, we actually really care about people. We do music for the people. It's not about, you know, us, our stuff, enjoyment. It's not about the money. I know it's not about the money for me. I do it for the love, and I do it, like, changing people and helping people become a better person. That's what I try to do. What's going on? This is Sensei Kai, and you are tuned into the Built on Self Success documentary. And it's all really came from dancing. That that was what brought us together at first. Oh my God. Is everybody here see Down Dirty Boys? Yeah, they are. Oh, I am too. I'm so excited. Oh, look at the tracks. Can't wait to see Kai and Ivory. Look, there they go. Oh, we take pictures. There they go. We take oh my pictures. God. Oh my God. Please. Oh.
I was actually in a group with LaRue. Uh, we was already doing like the whole snap thing. You know, it was like on the line, we were doing all them dances. I ran into a few friends from middle school and high school. Back in middle school, about seventh grade, I think, one of my homeboys came up to me and said, If this dude is just start going and look just like you, I'm like, What? Nobody look like me. You know, we just became the best of friends, really. And so. You know, when we got high school, it's when we started to start a group and everything. Shortly after that, we got Ivory. We uh, added him to the group. We made him try out in McDonald's. I just had no idea what I was really going in there to do. And he was down. Like he didn't care who was watching or nothing like that. So um, we took it from there. We started making music. And then so we started a group it's called Down and Dirty Boys. I was the last one to join in. That's when we made our first song. I thought we were blowing up overnight. We just took off from there. Had a lot of opportunities. Then we got dropped. But now we're grinding. We unsigned and grinding, really. Um, but it's crazy, Easy and Trilla, the twins, they the ones who got me started rapping. Those artists were uh, part of a group called Brave Atlanta Boys back in the day. What? We should do what? Red on deck, you already know, right? Fucking got down easy on deck. That's what I'm trying to say. Brave Atlanta Boys, you already know. Stop that shit. Music is pretty much like a story, you know, you're telling your story, where you came from, and how you grew up, and sometimes it's going to be pure entertainment. There's always some new dance coming out of Atlanta. Um, I'd say that it caused me to have a, a certain balance to my music. You know, it's not enough for your children to sit down to, as a liveness to it, as you get up and <laughs> just have fun. <laughs> I saw them doing it. I always wanted to do it, but I didn't have no outlet to do it. I didn't know how to get in the studio, how to find the studio. So um, they were doing their thing. So um, I reached out. I've known them since first grade, by the way, but I saw them doing it, and uh, I reached out. So, like, it's never been no bad blood along the way. It is everybody who has been along the way, they still here, and everybody play their own role now. So, when I got to college, um, by that time, LaRue, he wasn't in Down Dirty Boys anymore. It was just me and Ivory. So, um, you know, me and him decided we were just going to, you know, disband Down and Dirty Boys. That's when me and Bam linked up. It was crazy the whole time. Me and Ivory stayed in the same neighborhood. A few houses down from each other, we didn't even know it. Uh, I met Ivory back in MLK in his woods class, in the 12th grade, our English class. And we were just our kicking it since then, and they being cool. He told me he went to MLK, and I know that's where Ivory went. So I was like, you know what doing that, Ivory? He was like, yeah. Yeah, I know Ivory's a big ass head. He was a shit. So I met Sensei, so they, him and Ivory had all uh, what they had going on in months down the road. We found out we all made music, so we all just started making music together. Well, I had already met them. I seen me and them had the same vision. And we became, our first name was, um, I think our first name was Campaign. Because back then it was, we had, when we first started, it was what, Campaign, uh, some, some shit, boys. And then we ended up, me and Sensei ended up coming up with Infamous. So, but through that, uh, we had, it was a whole little, YBGM, your boss is getting money. That's really how Boss Club kind of started. Ah, uh -huh, YBGM. Yeah, that was, I forgot, I left that out. That was me, Bam, uh, BZ, and LaRue. After that, when we got older, you know, we had to 
change the brand up, make the name sound a little bit better, more appealing for marketing wise and stuff like that. So one day, it was just talking, it was like, shit, Lost Blood is what it's gonna be. Never seen the just took off with it. Um, and we still got that, but that's really what molded in the Boss Club. And it's crazy because who I was in the group with, all of them in Boss Club. Twins and everybody in Boss Club. As a team with like a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? It just used to be just me and my bro, you know what I'm saying? But now it's just all of us together, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you meet new people and you know, work with new people, you know? It's just the fact that everybody doing their own thing and nobody sounding like, that's what I like about it. What's good is BC Bam and right now you're watching the Built on Self Success documentary. Hey, what's up man? I'm BC Bam from Decatur, Georgia, and I'm one of the founders of Boss Club. So it's been I've been in it and been around it for like since 2010 for six years. So that's how long it's been going. RP London, RP Tierra, man. It's just some real shit. Before asking too many questions, so I'm like, fuck it. Yeah, you know, Monroe is just a like CEO him. first and then the artist. You know, they go go hand in hand, but Boy, it's pretty much back. me and Sensei were co CEO set sale like that. We get half shit in order. Back, you know, pass down the chain, set this up, set it up. Pretty much set operations and stuff back. like that. And yeah. of course, you got to put the switch to the artist side. That's what all started. That's the artist the whole feeling like I right left there. It all yeah, pretty much so taking care of business and making music. So the main two roles and just getting to that. I'm saying, my respect, regardless of how long he's been gone and how long he's not, is I can tell in his heart too when he talks. It's for real, but as far as like corralling a group of individuals together in order to do something, they both hit the mark. And I mean, their communication together is probably, you know, I'm not find that, but you know, I'm pretty sure they coincide together. So, like, nobody's not gonna stop what I got going on. Or what we try to do, if there's that verse we got there, it's going to look the other way, you know, it can't uh, respond to our opposition in life. So, stuff like that really don't even get there. So, if, it, if it's not gonna work, you see it ain't gonna work. Yeah, fuck it. Keep going. I just start? Yeah, whenever you want to. Um, check it. Real shit that never sound familiar, make them people feel you. Shout out to all my life familiar, wish I could be nearer. But dream chasing got me gone, so I stay in my zone. And these days, the Apple that we bite in, and them iPhones and IMAX. So let them fuck your world until they climax. We got one life to live and no way to get that time back. Seems like lately this pad been getting every thought I put out. Know I can make it rain, I'm trying to drink up in this new drought. My brother's chasing cream like it ain't nothing else we knew about. I'm trying to break the screen like I just dropped a new phone. And I just dropped a new single. Guess I know it hit home. Y'all swinging for them fences. They should call me Barry Bones. I'm all about my fitness. Rather practice the scrimmage. Competition never finished. They cook but don't do the dishes. Hit the gym once a month and swear they all about fitness. Selling out like eBay and say they flipping like a gymnast. Pop be full of noodles, say they cooking like a chemist. I take them all to church yelling, can I get a witness? Quote Darwin when I spit, it's the survival of the fittest. No, I won't let the money out this life before I'm finished. Top of the rat pack, I scrape the plate when I'm dinning. I'm dining with someone who got me looking forward to ending. Retirement's looking gravy, money so mashed potatoes. Family so macaroni, I forgot about that steak though. My pocket's full of salad, I'm eating at buffet tables. At times I feel my mind, I forgot to speak out and say mo. Like re breaking in the memory racks and forgot the safe code. Forever in the day with my 15 minutes to payroll. Rolling the dough ain't shit, put it in the oven and bake mo. Let that shit hit the floor like my family under the table. <sighs> <laughs> 40 acres in the mule, my ass, get out my way, ho. Say they gon' let you finish what you started, Kanye. Pulling out that driveway on the road to my mind state. But progress is so overlooked with Congress all in my way. And they taxing for every way to get out of this mind state. That's why many of us from under go back to them crime ways. But hey, that's how we living in the moment. It's many of us stuck in the moment, they'll never own it. I know I'm hot dog, I never relish in the moment. And sometimes that man in the mirror be your only opponent. <laughs> Alright, I'm done. Boss Club, yeah. Come from the bottom to break through the ceiling. That sounds appealing. I bet I'm from you know ATL. I do music. Like, I've been in Boss Club since before Boss Club. I've been doing music since I was 11. That was my first time in the booth. Um, didn't take it seriously until I was 16. You know, everybody started dreaming around that age. And ever since then, I've been just chasing the dream of music. It's not even a dream of fame. I'm chasing the dream. I've always been recognized as somebody who does music wherever I go.
My first time in the studio, I was 11 years old. I did a song with my cousin, my older sister. And that was a, uh, that was one hell of an experience. The only thing that an 11 year old knows what to talk about is the things that he heard. He's not really speaking for himself. So we go fast forward to when I'm 16 and I decide I'm gonna take this shit serious. But I'm 16 still. You know, I'm growing, I'm growing as myself, but I still ain't stepped into my shoes the same way that I stand here now. I don't follow trends as much anymore. I just pretty much try to set my own or just go with my own flow because it don't matter what everybody else think because, you know, what I need to be on stage for if I'm a mannequin, you know what I'm saying? Not a mannequin in the sense that I'm just standing still, but a mannequin in the sense that somebody else can dress me and made me this way. Like, I might not write enough weeks. I might write some four weeks. I just wrote four bars. And then next time I wrote four more bars. And then the next time I just finish it, finish the rest of the song just like that. I just going over it again and again. So it can be perfect. I know the way I want to record it. I know the way I want it to sound before I record it. That way when I get in there, it's straight to business. And recording is the easy part. Because all the hard work has been put in beforehand. All the times I went over it, changed the way I was going to rap this bar, that bar. And then recording after, you, after you're done with it, you know, you just play it back, listen to it, and it's perfect. <laughs> That's the whole process. See, I got Chase Your Dreams tatted on my chest. Like, you're not going to get nothing if you don't put in no work for it. I can show you that. Because, like, over the past, what, year and a half, I ain't put in that much work in music. What I got from it, folks waiting on me to drop shit. You know what I'm saying? So, like, built on substance. It's on you. It's on your time. Both of them niggas' doors closed, so I don't know what's going on. I can go in there, bitch. I ain't doing it. <laughs> like, oh, that's cool. Oh, oh. 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 Hey. Alright, what's up? What's up? Yeah, so we didn't actually get a verse from you. And guess what? You don't have to freestyle it. It can be something you already wrote. So you wanna like, you know, go ahead and just do this. This just is the that part really. Yeah. Can you tell Ross like see your beautiful face? Thank you. Uh, yes, I love it. It's just so, so great. I know about my my oh wait, I'm on brother though. Look, it, sometimes in life you're gonna have to do things without your brother, and this is one of them. Yeah, uh, yeah. damn, yo, like shit. It's okay. It's okay. I just woke up. <laughs> Y'all, y'all gotta give me a second, man. Let me, can I, let me watch the lunch room real quick, man. To the lunch room? Yeah. So, like, look, I'm gonna let you go to the lunch room, but you are gonna give me at least four bars that you already have written, that you already have memorized. It's less than time, just in time. Y'all sweat less than mine. Better, better reckon I roll it up. This burn like exercise. Only, only mess with dimes. Map, but you know I can't flex some minds. So I head to the edge of sign, check the time, but we next in line. Hey. The twins. Easy and Trilla, they got so much, so much of their own like swag to their music. It's always entertaining. It's always so important. It always is just hitting and getting into your body and make you move. Why nobody ever know? Easy and Trilla, they got that Atlanta sound going for them, but it's the same time it's unique because that their flow is not. And normal Atlanta flow, and then they got the whole twin thing going for us. That's some good PR. No trilla. My name is Easy. I'm from Stonebell. Yeah, I've been in Boston for about two years. You know what I'm saying? I've been in Boston since you know the beginning and shit. Yeah, what is your goal doing this music thing? You get a different feel of music, you know, not the same kind of music they've been here, you know, that's really what I want them to get from it, you know, something different. How it's going to sound, if people going to like it, you know, really that's how I, how I think. I mean, I want it to sound like 
something that people are gonna like that sounds different. I don't want it to sound the same, really, you know. I want it to be different, but I want people to like it still, you know. Me and my brother, we just grew up doing this thing together. You know, we really a group. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just, I'm just a group. You know, we just a group. Fast money, rapido dinero. If your crew ain't getting currency, y'all something dead hoes. Speaking of which, currency crew apparel. Forced to look down that barrel. Hold that down, Will Ferrell. Call me Anchor Man. Having dreamed about robbing banks again. Again, I try to stop trapping, but these niggas keep bringing them in. But the size of head, breaking bread. Hey, nigga, end up dead. Don't quote what I said. He bled. We fled. Uh, nigga don't want no smoke like we at the gas station. She'll be trying to get money, you out here ass chasing. Funny thing about that, these bitches sat chasing. You ain't got no sack, you ain't get no ass. More of the story, fuck bitch, get cash. You ain't never seen 220 on the dash. Shot to spend a hundred on lashes. Uh, low ticket, high fashion. Movie lights, camera action. Get it and flip it and run it back. Rent, do cool, shot to relax. Hit my nigga cause he owe me a pack. Hope it gas either way, I'm a tax. This is a little 16. I'm fast money, bird. Fuck what you heard. The track just slow, we go pose up on the curb. Uh, what do I do? I'm an artist. Uh, I'm a rapper. And I've been in golf club since the beginning. I mean, I was one of the first recruits, I guess we can say. I hate him and told me he was going to do some shit called Boss Club, and I was in ever since then. I want people to listen to my music and hear my story, uh, people around me's story. I don't just rap about my life, because I don't live the best life in the world, but, you know, I rap about my life, my experiences, my partner's experiences, family, you know, Shit and no shit that I just know is going on. Again, I want to be a lyrical, conscious rapper. That's my goal. But right now, you know, in, in order for people to listen to you or give you a chance, right now in this music shit, you gotta kind of, you know, give them what they want. Uh, trying to be more like a lyrical artist and get people to listen to me and not really the type to do shows and be on the radio, but just like have a strong fan base type of shit. But I learned that you got to give folks the dumb shit. Sometimes you got to dumb it down and give the people what they want. I know my shit not whack. I know I'm better than a lot of other people that they have put on in the past. Everybody that I said. You know, so shit. I'm not gonna waste nobody's time. It, I'm not rapping about nothing that I just completely don't know about. But get yeah, that and just want more from me and wanna wanna get to know me and follow what I got going on. Just listen to my music, like it, and fuck with me as a person. I wanna have real fans like not just fans of my music, but fans of me as a person. Like mostly, um, I guess I would maybe be on the waterline of trap. Me and Silly, lyrical conscious. I was talking about Kai, Ivory, and J Bands. Jiggy is uh, out of space. Fuck a beat. Uh, fuck a beat. Real as it gets, even if I'm in or not in the streets, it could be what it is as long as all my family eat. It doesn't matter whatever feet I could feet on a beat, but if it's with another rapper I don't like, let's believe he's paying more than vegetables and the meat. That's whole food. That means that's whole foods. That's mean that's all natural. And if it's not natural, I can't get with it and back back. That didn't rhyme, but as I said, it doesn't matter. And that's fact, because I just did again. And that's it is. So you should end it. As far as I get it, and what I get is I'm um, grinding or spinning, it doesn't matter. I could pull back and do some other shit, chit chatter. Uh, something like that.
other guy who does his job. You must be the other guy. Got my boy Jiggy. You know, he he got his own little thing that he got. Like, he's like, he a little throw, but I really fuck with him. He, this is what I mean by the uniqueness of music. Like, he got something special. I am the beast, man. Um, I'm a songwriter, I rap. I wish I could sing, but I don't. So I songwrite for singers. I met, I met pretty much everyone I probably needed to meet at uh, the same day they shot uh, Middle Finger, which was like maybe two or three years ago, someday in October. Um, I came here for their birthday party. You know, they were all, I kind of met the rest of Boss Club. And I didn't really join then at the time, but I was I was kind of aware of what was going on. After that, you know, a couple of meetings later, um, I started kind of getting where they were going. They seemed like they had a pretty good business sense. And the CEO didn't seem like he was on some bullshit. So I definitely uh, had no problem uh, signing my loyalty to Boss Club. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm kind of part of the group that would kind of drove me to go harder. I don't think I'd be where I am right now. Yo, these hoes asinine. These hoes asinine. Man, these hoes asinine. Last time I checked, I was man of the evening. Well, Nature Boy, straight out of East Atlanta, Georgia. I feel got its own little story to tell and I just try to bring it out. When I write my lyrics, it really, I, I kind of go off the beat, you know what I'm saying? Like then I sort of make a story in my head that goes with it. I just love the, the hardcore feel of it. Like I'm all about lyrics. Like that's what I live and die on, my lyrics. That's all I really got at the end of the day. That's what I started with, that's how I'm gonna go out. This unique about Nature Boy is Nature Boy is going to tell you exactly what he's thinking every time. Every time. And I can say I'm going to put my heart in every single song. So you can look forward to at least high quality music. And not to mention, oh man, we got a young one, man, Cash coming up. Like, if you see the transformation on this kid, him and his brother in RMP, you got Cash and King Count. Both of them, they're just getting better. Wolves inside of the cut, chillin' just smoking a blunt. What's that in a cut? Would not be discussed. Fuck everybody, not rockin' with us. All of my young niggas ready, let's get it. If you ain't TGD, then you can forget it. Niggas don't want beef with me, cause I'm with it. RP busy, I stay representing your nigga, you dig it. Love on my niggas forever. When somebody says they don't wanna press it, them niggas ain't stupid, them niggas know better. Both try to catch them, we run together, but it ain't go smooth. Now I still don't know who that nigga here to go smooth. Like, what the fuck wrong with them? Here and there, try to wrong nigga. Get small like a bone nigga, we stronger than a tree chunk. Serving niggas like the ice cream truck. He don't fuck with me, I get three fucks. Simply ain't so I'll be stuck, yeah. C Cash. I'm a rapper. I'm in R&P. I'm in Boss Club. R&P is rich, never poor. It, it means I was rich before I was poor. <laughs> what do you want, uh, what you want people to say for the energy. What energy is that? The hype energy. I'm a I'm a hype rapper. I'm I'm in the studio every single day grinding. You feel me? They producing their own music. I wasn't doing that at that age. We will come into the studio and do everything you need to do. I'm not like every every other rapper trying to sound like a different rapper. My voice is different. I have a different flow than everybody. I don't think I'm like the best freestyling. So, man, when I write, it, you know, magic happens, you feel me? And they actually got some really good music for their age. So it's real good time on music for kids. Well, my older brothers, chilling easy. 
they, they like, Kai, they're his best friends or whatever. And, you know, I just got affiliated. Then, you know, I just got down with it. You know, it's a whole team full of artists, plus more. It's a whole, it's a good positive vibe. Everybody's good. And the rappers that's in the, that's in Boss Club, they, they help me, criticize me, so I can get better. So everybody really going hard in Boss Club, so. It's good content and good subs, it's not just all regular. I mean, we got the, the bitches and hoes, money and cash type shit. That's what people are inclined to listen to, and that's what that's what's popping these days. But also, we got, got subs into the music, so you just take a listen to it and hear what we talking about. I'm CE Cash, and it's the Boss Club, you feel me? The money way, cash! Yo. <laughs> Yo, all that. Hey man, listen here, check this out, man. Y'all already know, man. Weight walk shit, boss club, YB gym. Y'all already know, man. I think recorded, bro. Nobody can stop me one on one, bro. Hey, I said to Dominique. Dominique can't stop me one on one. Dominique, no, you can't stop me. Uh, why is it so important for a boss club, you know, to have these events? Like, what do y'all bring out of this? I mean, we not just we not just a label. We are family. It's family vibe. So. Every time we link up, it's not just business. We do a lot of things for just team bonding. You know, if we're gonna take over the whole world, we gotta be strong as a core. So we do stuff all the time. There's no random niggas around right now, but it's our people. Day one niggas, like some of these niggas right here, 10 year man, 10 year brothers. So that's why we do stuff all the time. That's just how I gotta be for real family. Man. So. How often do y'all do events like this? That's for training. I mean, yeah, like, when we do professional events, we, like, do those at least once a month. But things like this, we do this all the time. Like, right now, it's no business. It's just brotherhood type activities, man. So, that's all the time. Like, I see I see them every other day. It's not just like, oh, where you been at, bro? Like, I know where everybody on. I see them all the time. So, what makes Boss Club different? The music we put out, how we move. Everything we do is through us. Like I, like I always say, it stands for built on self-success. That's what makes us different. We don't, we don't go around kissing ass for handouts. Everything we do, it just feels so much better because we're not asking for handouts. We do everything ourselves. When we do an event, it's us. We fund it. We fund our studio time. We get our own connections. So that's what makes us different, separates us. And our music not the same. We're not just talking about this BS that a lot of people talking about. Like, everything's authentic. Like, Everything is authentic. Shit. We're not the only people with authentic quality music, but the way we move is just so different, man. So that's what I think makes us different. When did events like this start? Like, when did y'all start getting together like this? <laughs> yeah, like he said, when we, when we were 16, it's nothing new. Like, I don't know, this man for 10 years, man. So, like, we've been doing this. We just do it on a larger scale now because we got more people on the team. So, Everything we do now is on a larger scale, but we've been doing this for years, man. It's nothing new. Like I said, it's, it's brothers, so I mean, I've been in the business mode, we link up all the time. Hey, 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 What's up, three, two? We still gonna win. We, we already up in the lead. All the losers. They owe me some money, man. It's, it's going by many names. There was Down and Dirty, there was YBGM, there was 818. Then we went and started fucking with other teams, you know what I'm saying? But this the first time that we'd actually CEO some shit up on our own, you know what I mean? And that's what makes it so strong. We've had a lot of ups and downs. It's been really 50 50 balance with the ups and downs. So, you know, just taking more things, dealing with more things, that's gonna naturally make you more mature. So, that's one of the biggest things. And it showed me, it showed me how to move smarter and make more boss moves. Because at this point, you know, we can't lack on anything. We can't be mediocre. So, it showed me every time we do something, it has to be good. So, every time we do something, I know we gotta try our hardest at this point. Because you gotta separate yourself. Steel sharp and steel. And I'm always down to get better. So if I feel like 
my people to get better and I need to step my game up too. It made me grow as a businessman and also somebody who knows how to network better than what I did before. Because back then, like I say, we was just doing shit for the first time. Now we actually formed together and got people doing this, people doing that. We actually have a, a company up on our names. I started this journey, you know what I'm saying? I was poor, but now I got money now, a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm maintaining. Shit. I'm, shit, I'm happy where I'm at right now. I say Boss Club helped me, you know. It definitely helped me you know, gain more confidence because like, in that booth, making the song ain't as easy as it seems. You know, this gave me the platform to do it, basically. Major labels. Some artists don't get shown as much love as other artists. Everybody here gets shown love and don't get the support they need. Like in five years, I want to look back and say, damn, like we made it. You feel me? In five years, I don't want to still be on the level that we at now trying to get it. Now, I feel like we're going to, you know, we're going to make things happen. Things going to pop, you know what I'm saying? By five years, it's going to be over. But we know we got what it takes, you know what I'm saying? We know we got that heat, we got that fire, you know what I'm saying? People love our music. I feel like this year, 2017, especially, we're going to pretty much be on top doing what we want to do, you know? Every avenue we got set up now, it's gonna be in full effect and it's gonna be rocking. That leads us to today. We uh we got a few more branches now. A lot less people now, but we're trying to still move.